Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. In this video? Let's look at what are modern development practices. I'm sure I'm not including all of the modern development practices in here. Uh, there are a lot of things like ATDD and things like that, which are evolving even now. So DevOps and things like that, which are happening now. And I'm sure over a period of time, there'll be a lot of new practices coming in at also. So this is to just give you an overview of the important ones. Um, I would start with the first modern development practice I would really want to highlight is unit testing and mocking. It's not really a modern development practice anyway. Uh, unit testing has been there for more than a decade now, but I've seen projects where it's not used. So uh, it's essential that in this age of continuous integration and delivery, you should really have good unit tests in place. I don't really mean code coverage. I mean, I'm not a really big fan of having uh, code coverage aims or things like that it's good to have uh, focus on code coverage but only as like as far as uh, you actually have good assets so code coverage without having good uh, assets or good checks i mean if you're not really testing the functionality and if you have tests for the sake of code coverage then they're almost useless it's just a waste of developers time so make sure that you have good unit tests in place. Um, also, like uh, like understand things like mocking. So there are really good mocking frameworks like Mockito. So here is a good start. I mean, there's a like there's a video on JUnit in here, so you can look that up. Also, there would be videos on Mockito on the channel as well. So Mockito is very popular. Easy Mock is a good mocking framework as well, but Mockito is the one which is ruling the roast right now. So also, I mean, Mockito has its limitations or design choices, I would call them. So if you want to test things like static classes or mock things like that, then you also have the option of going with power mock. The other modern practice that I would want to highlight is automation testing. So here, the real automation testing I focus on is automated integration tests. So you should really have automation integration tests based on frameworks like Fitness or Cucumber or Protractor which tests the end-to-end -end functionality of the application. It's very important to use things like that or using something like Robo Framework. So it's very important that you have uh, complete end-to-end -end testing uh, through automation. That's really good. And it would be really great if we actually make them part of continuous integration. We'll talk about continuous integration very soon. So the next important modern development practice is TDD. It's not really modern again anymore. It's been there for more than a decade. And it's very important that you understand what TDD is. So basically, TDD means writing your test before your code. So you write the test co test first, and then write the code to make it succeed. So right, like so basically, you write a test because there's no code, it would fail. That's called red. And you write the code to make that test pass. That's called green. I mean, so red, green, and the third step is called refactor, where you actually make the code really good. So the thinking be behind TDD is first working code, then make it better. So uh, write, write code, refactor, write code, refactor. So And in very, very, very small steps. I mean, if you are hearing about this for the first time, test driven development for the first time, it might sound really odd. You might think this will not work at all. I know, I know that feeling. I've seen through that feeling. Uh, almost seven to eight years back when I first started test driven development, it was a tough initial initiation, I would say. So, I, I mean, at that time, I had about six to seven years of experience, I think, and there were a set of practices I was following until then, and I had to completely change them when I adapted TDD. It was really a bad shock for me, but 
as I became good at TDD, I really understood the value of it. And nowadays, I mean, I would hardly write any piece of code without doing TDD. So uh, it's 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 going to be a tough walk if you take a TDD. But if you are in the early stages of career or career, then try and understand TDD and use it. It's easy to do it early than late. So uh, good luck. I mean, it's uh, as I say here, once you use once you're used to TDD, you'll never go back. I mean, t like with test and development, you would see that you would find so many things very early that they would save you a lot of time. So here's a set of videos that you can use to start working on TDD. Uh, have fun. I mean, it's it's going to be a <laughs> rude awakening, but I, I like it. So the other the other uh, thing is BDD. So basically, I mean, BDD is a great tool to enable communication between the ready team. I mean, if you talk about any scrum teams, you'd have a ready team, I mean, which is basically the team which works the on the backlog, which kind of get the backlog ready. So that's basically your business analyst, product owner, and it's basically your business team. And you have the done team, which is like the developers, testers, and the operations, along with your scrum master and the architects and those kind of stuff. So it's very important to have good communication between the ready team and the done team. And I found BDD to be a great tool to enable that. So in BDD, the way business analysts write their specification, so let's say I'm writing a requirement for a specific scenario. What I would do is I would write it in, like for a specific uh, user story. Then I would write it in such a way, uh, in scenarios. So I would say, given when that, given this situation, when this happens, then. And also, the focus is on automating these things. So what we would do is we would have automation frameworks in place that could run these as automated tests. So when business writes these, I mean, when the business analyst writes these, obviously these scenarios would fail because that's your red state. So it's basically, TDD is basically when we are coding it. So BDD is when you're writing, I mean, it's more at the automated integration test level. So you kind of write an automated integration test first, see it fail, then write the code to make it pass and it would pass and that kind of a cycle. So that's also called given when then kind of a thing. So it's, uh, yeah, it's basically, uh, it's, it, like it needs a lot of maturity in the team to do T BDD well, but I found it working really well uh, after a little difficult period initially. So with tools like Cucumber and Fitness, um, this is really uh, something which is not, far, I mean, this is something which is really possible these days. Uh, the other, I mean, the important thing is refactoring. So yeah, I mean, is there a developer or a designer or an architect who does not encounter bad code? Nope. So as soon as you encounter bad code, it's very important to at least refactor and make it understandable. At least you spend some time to understand it, try and put it back into code. So try and make sure that whatever understanding you got is put back into code. And also uh, very important is to understand the roles of automation tests in refactoring. If you have unit tests, if you have good unit tests which catch defects and which find if functionality breaks, then it's very easy to refactor. So always like unit testing and refactoring goes together. When you refactor something, you don't want to break code. So if you have good tests, automation tests in place, then people are more inclined to refactor. So refactoring is another really good uh, mode of development practice. And last but not the least is continuous integration. So almost every project today has continuous integration. Uh, I mean, every project that you talk to, uh, they say they have continuous integration in place. But for me, the most important question to ask is, what is run under continuous integration? So at least compilation, unit tests, and the code quality gates. These are really the bare minimum. So you should have code compiling, all the unit tests passing, and your code at least meeting the automated code quality standards, the static analysis standards. That's kind of the basic things. So if you really have integration tests, good integration tests, chain tests, and they're running part of continuous integration, wow, that's, that's really good. And uh, one important thing with continuous integration is make sure that your builds don't take too long. So if you 
really do a lot of things in the continuous integration what might happen is it might slow down everything so immediate feedback is very important so if actually needed sometimes in continuous integration uh, you can have two continue i mean two builds so you can run a continuous integration build which runs as soon as a code is committed which kinds of contains the most important things and probably for other things like integration and chain tests you can have a separate build schedule less frequently maybe once every four hours or maybe once every day and uh, the most popular continuous integration tool right now is jenkins so that kind of uh, yeah the most important modern development practices i wanted to talk to you about thanks for watching this video we created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design architecture and programming we have created two complete git repositories for you java technology for beginners and java best practices java best practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns code quality design architecture and modern development practices we talk about rest services soap web services microservices cloud native applications four principles of simple design among a varied range of other topics tells you how to become a good programmer designer or an architect java technology for beginners focuses on the frameworks concepts practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.